Counselor Accents Podcast. Two school counselors who love their jobs. Oh, and they happen to have Southern accents too. Bless their hearts. Welcome to Counselor Accents. It is time for our podcast. I'm Laura. I am Kim. And, and together, together we are Counselor, Counselor Accents. Accents. And happy National School Counseling Week. And a happy National School Counseling Week to you. Thank you. We talked about it last time, but now we are in the thick of it. And so, would you like to share anything about National School Counseling Week? I might, since I am wearing a t-shirt specially made from you from one of our staff, one of uh, the staff here at my school. It's just so sweet. Counselor own it. I love it. And I changed into it immediately when I got here. Um... And she I had a, delicious because of the creams and lotions, various creams and lotions that was was bought for me. So today, my the staff at my school honored me with a delicious food and gift cards and snackies, and it was really really nice. So, and your staff honored you with. <laughs> It's okay. I'm it's trying to about, make a cricket noise. It's for you. okay. It's about advocating for our program, and that's what I did all week. I, I didn't. No, I, that's not. That's not true. That's, that's not, not true. true. We did. We, we both went did. To Sam's together and got our stuff, and so we had a very big week. And how do you know I didn't buy all that stuff for myself? <laughs> that's a good point. You could have. Oh, but anyway, I did advocate my little heart out. You did. You and did so, for our program. We did. We both did. Yep. So to, my to purpose spotlight what we're doing and what we can do week. for the teachers. So, but now I we have seen a lot of people uh, making comments and um, just talking about how they were not celebrated during National School Counseling Week, and plus this is just a really tough time of year. I think it's cold. It is for everybody. The winter is drug on. Even though I must say, because I have to give the weather report. Okay, you know, seventy three degrees here yesterday. Yep. We leave early because, because of a storm. Of the I got threat away of from tornadoes. Her because which, if you listen to our other podcast, then you know you don't want to be around mm-hmm, her during a storm. Mm-hmm. So I got as far because away my house from her is blown can. away, church blown away, and my school has blown away. All three different tornadic episodes. So. Threatening tornadoes yesterday. We went home early and uh, 73 yesterday tonight. Snow flurries. Really? Yes. I did not know that. About and the so if you see me, I was out. It was still storming this morning and thus I look like a drowned cat. As do I. Because I as had do you. I, I didn't want to say I anything. I had Carline this morning. In and, this storm. In said storm. Yeah. And so yeah. my Carline partner walked out with her umbrella the wind broke it in half. I'm not even kidding. Turned well, it inside out and broke it in half. I will now uh, uh, admit what I have done. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I'm getting in this morning and I have a lot to unload, you know, bringing things in for our teachers for That's National School Counselor Week. Mm-hmm. So I'm bringing things in the door and I park right at the door, I get my stuff out. I grab the umbrella, the school umbrella that is by the door, and I go out the umbrella flies mm. upward into the air you know it's supposed to go down it goes up it is broken so i park my car and i roll it up and it is now whoever opens you it you put it right back they're going to go what happened to the umbrella and i'm going to go what yeah. it? <laughs> okay well confession time you heard it here first um okay so People don't want to hear the weather. I do, because I'm a weather nerd. They want to know about how to take care of themselves as a counselor. As this cold weather drags on. We are oftentimes so busy taking care of other people and other people's children, or as I like to say, childrens, that sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. How many times do you hear, and I hear it very frequently, I couldn't do what you do. Yeah. I could not take hearing all the or knowing all the things that you know and I don't know whether to be uh thankful that you know for them being you know I don't know if they're bragging on me or if if they think my goodness this woman has no heart yeah I had someone today say I couldn't sleep at night Mm -hmm. you know and Mm -hmm. and really though for a lot of us and I have been there and you know I have been there uh after a very bad uh event that happened um 
with a student um, a couple of years ago, and that really got to me. And so sometimes when we're doing what we, we're doing, it can really get to us. Yeah. Yeah, we've all had those nights probably where we can't sleep. We're thinking about these students, wondering, did we do enough? But I also think that certain people are gifted for certain things. And I think when you're, well, I don't know. We all have those days. But I do think that it's easier maybe sometimes when it's your calling mm -hmm. and you just have that gift, I guess, Yeah. to to compartmentalize maybe. Yeah. If that's a good thing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But we still need to take care of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about uh, ways that we can take care of ourselves, ways that we are, if you're listening, ways that you can take care of yourself. And just to remind you that you need to take care of yourself. Um, one thing that um, I depend on is knowing that my happiness is does not depend on other people that my happiness comes from within and um, I remember this being an aha moment for me when the pastor's wife told me that she and her husband the pastor um, were talking and disagreeing or whatever and she said well my happiness does not depend upon you and I thought wow that's a great thing to know and remember yeah. that our happiness does not depend on other people. Um, they they can bring us joy, you know, when we when we're with us. But really, ultimately, we have to be have that happiness within ourselves. Yeah. Well, just you saying that, it's almost like it takes a weight off of your shoulders because yes, you don't put pressure on yourself or other people. Right. Right, so, it, and it has. It was an aha moment for me. Well, you know, that makes me think about, do you remember this summer when we were at the mega conference? Mm -hmm. And do you remember we just happened to walk up on a conversation and that girl was saying, um, happiness is situational, but joy comes from within. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. And that was an aha moment for me, I think, because you want to feel happy and you go from from event to event and you want to feel that happiness, but it's that joy mm -hmm. that is constant you know you've got to figure out what your source of joy is yes that's right and, and people leave they 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 pass away they leave they disappoint us and that's even people we love and if you hinge you know you hang your hat on other people making you happy then you know that's putting a lot on them too yeah and yourself so that doesn't you know so that's Very a good, good thing to remember all right. So what's our first tip? We're going to give you nine tips. That was like a bonus. That was just a bonus. So now we're going to start with our official list of nine ways to take care of yourself. Self-care is such a big topic right now. And it is. So and I think people. in our day and age, because of uh, technology and, and, and with social media and all the information that we're getting, and I told you I heard... Uh, Counselor James Dobson say one time that we're getting more information in yes. one day than they would have gotten in an entire lifetime that 100 is years ago. Amazing. So Just, that wears yeah. you out, even if it's not bad information. It's so much coming in; it just wears you out. So what do we do when we're worn out? Number well, one, I call a friend, and you are that friend that I usually call. Kim makes me laugh. I've said this before. That the type of people that I want to be around are the ones that make me laugh until I can't breathe. And that is what she does for me. Absolutely. And I hope I return the favor. And you do. Okay. You make me laugh so hard. So you, uh, and, and somebody that you can vent. Yeah. And know you don't that they know it. your heart. Uh -huh. And you really don't want to do those things you're threatening to do. You're right. just venting. And you need right. that person there to do that. Well, I called her last week. Actually, I think we were together. And I'm, I'm unloading. And you're trying to think of solutions. And I was like, I don't need you to fix it. I just <laughs> need you to listen. And so, and I can do that. I went in she counselor can, mode. Yeah. Yeah. Solution, solution focused. focused, but sometimes we just need to to be there and yeah. and just to laugh, you know. Yeah, share a cat so pic, That's which right. we'll do in a minute. Mm, Spoiler alert! Teaser, little teaser. All right, tip number two. What do you do? Uh, this is a biggie for me. Is creative outlet. Um, I think it cr 
this is a, a great way to relieve stress. For me, it's my number one thing is, is creativity. I yeah. love to paint. Uh, I, don't, I don't get a lot of time to do that, but I love to create things. Mm -hmm. So, And you shared um, an article about Legos oh, actually yeah. now being used by adults. Yeah, they're marketing Legos to stressed out adults. And you know, there's a new show. A no, I didn't. It's a re it's a new. They really is touted a word. Yeah, they touted. I never I never get to use that word, so I'm gonna say it again. Okay. They touted the Lego show uh -huh. during the Super Bowl. Uh, it's a reality television show, huh. and it's adults creating like a competition. I really don't know what it's going to be about other Sounds than it's a competition where they create Lego yeah. designs. Hmm. Okay. So that's going to be, sounds like a big show that's coming up. So yeah, people are, I think more than ever need that creative outlet. And you may be thinking, I'm not creative, but I read a book last year. I think it was called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And she talked about how when you say you're not creative, like change your, change your language and say that you are creative or, and, and I saw this with you. I would have said that I was not a creative person. And then when Kim and I got together and started, we were making lessons for our classes. She shared with me something that had inspired her. And I thought, my brain does not think like that. But the more we were together in creative products and lessons, yes, now and so it's like, your brain's going all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so I yeah. think the more you exercise your creative muscle, the more creative you become. So don't just <coughs> say I'm not creative. <coughs> Try being creative. Go outside and just see what inspires you or look at a magazine and look at the colors that you like or the pictures you like and just see what Absolutely. inspires you. Yeah. I'm going to add, call this Ooh, too. Okay. And that's travel. Travel. Yes, that's good. When you said what inspires you or what uh -huh. causes creativity um, is it's kind of like those something's firing off in the brain yeah. when you're traveling you're seeing something new things you've places you've never been before uh, different folks that you're around it just kind of inspires you that yeah. that has been it's a break mm -hmm. when I can travel and get away from everything, my community, and just, you know, wherever it is, and I see different things, my brain just starts creating. Yeah. So and I it doesn't think, even have to be far. No, it really doesn't. It. it really doesn't. So um, we were together last weekend just in a, what it was a, just about 100 miles away. Yeah. And um, just getting away, and you come back and you refresh. Yeah. But then we missed each other. Yeah. And we were just calling me. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, just... You know, take time to travel. I would say that's one of something you need to do. Yeah. I, I'm still thinking about that cake that we ate which from Alexis. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, was. <clears throat> All right. Tip number three is read, read a, a book. book. <laughs> read a book. Yeah. It's like a mini vacation when you can't travel. Yeah. You can't get on the plane and go somewhere do or you ever, get in your car. Do you ever feel guilty reading a book? No. Okay. Um, I read constantly. I'm one of those people that if I have a sec, people say they don't have time to read, it would not matter. We're, I have to have words. I have mm -hmm. to see words. So if I'm in the bathroom, too You're, much information, okay. I'm reading. If I, I have stuff in my car, if I'm sitting... I'm reading, so... If I'm in the bathroom, I have three people knocking on the door. <laughs> so you do Two not children get and one husband saying, hey, That's three children. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So I don't know how that is for too much information, but it's it's life. Yes, but, I love to read. But we all we are always reading. We are. Mm -hmm. I do yeah. read. I, I read We read nighttime. different kinds of books. You yeah. do a lot of self-help books. You do... You do a lot of historical fiction. I do a lot of historical which I'm fiction. I'm not into. I'm reading The Guardian right now with John Grisham, okay. which is really, really so much fun. At the same time, I'm reading a Mary Higgins Clark book. So oh, I've actually got Mary two Higgins books Clark. going. But if you've read one, you no, okay. Anyway, no, really, it's true. But still, I can't. If stop. Mary Higgins Clark is listening, I didn't want to. And I'm sure her. she is. I want to go right now on a limb and say, "Hey, Mary." <laughs> I'm sure she's listening. And her daughter. She has a daughter. I know. Okay. No, that's not her daughter. That really? Helps. I think it's her niece. 
Oh, that's writing the books with her. Something. Yeah, I really don't know that for certain. Well, if you're listening, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. I love the books. Okay, you might go ahead. Uh, so number now that I've got them out of order, I'm just all freaked out here. Number five. Okay. All right. One, two, one, two, three, four, five okay. is to go out. With friends. With friends. Not your husband. Do you notice she's she stole that in quickly? I was like real with Not with your family. <laughs> not with your family. I went on a trip with her and her family. Oh <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> I had a ball. I had a ball. But she It was one of the most stressful. It was just like she had this stress look on her face the entire trip. Let me put it to you this way. We were out at the pool, and at one point, one of my children was completely Naked. Up. I don't know. Naked. And no I'm like, when did we let you get your clothes off? It was fun. So that was like, that summarizes what my trip was like <laughs> with her, with my family. It's not happening again. So go with friends. Find some friends and, and maybe some coworkers and, and, uh, and some, I know. Some it's fun to go out with women and do a women's trip it and is. that kind of thing. I know I need to do that, but if I have a night, sometimes I just want to sit at home Absolutely. in my comfy clothes. Absolutely. So not out, not in, whatever. So exercise. Yeah. You're an exerciser. I'm not. But go figure. I mean, I if look I like I'm like an that, exerciser. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't exercise either. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, I do exercise. I I try to do it every morning, and I feel better mentally yes. when I do. I don't know anybody that doesn't say they don't feel better. Yeah. It's kind of addictive, too. You kind of feel like you, you know. Yeah, and I do beach body, and I don't sell it, but I use it. Yes. And a lot of times during the workouts, they say, you never hear somebody say, man, I regret doing that workout. And it's so true. I've never yeah. regretted it. Even when I'm sore, I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, you've guilted me into wanting to exercise. Okay. Even a walk in the woods. Yeah. You, know, you do a lot of that. I do walk. I do a lot of walking, and 30 minutes a day is what, you know, for heart healthy. It, it doesn't have to be running, just walking. Yeah. Helps. So, uh, so seven is take a bath. Are, are you saying, did you say? I, that's not number seven. I was telling you, please go take, take a, a bath. bath. Yeah, because I go a good. Because <laughs> all that lotion that you got for your national school counseling. It's not week? covering. No. It's making it worse. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I hate to say this to you and make you feel worse, but I have some bath salts that I was oh, going to wow. Maybe that's a hint now that I think about it. <laughs> Kim has this really great bathtub. I, I want do. to come over and soak in it. Would that be weird? It would. But why not? <laughs> Yes, it's got the, you know, it's the big tub with the automatic bubbler in it. And I have a water heater that the heating element, one of the heating elements is, <laughs> has been out of for over a year, okay. two years. Okay. So you can get half heat. Yes. So I can fill it up halfway, but I'm a very large person. <laughs> so, She's the great <laughs> Dane of women. I need more than just half a bath. Well, so yeah. I need to come to your house. Yes, you can come over and okay. bathe anytime. I'm sure that wouldn't be weird. Uh, eight is journal. Do you journal? I don't. I do. And what's so fun about journaling is, like this morning, when I looked at it, I could see exactly what was going on. For And, and the way I set my journal up is it's all, it's dated. Mm -hmm. And so I can go... It's all underneath the same day. I have I put in something for that day. Do you handwrite it? Or I do. Okay. I handwrite it. And so whatever I've done for the last two years, but I've journaled for 23 years. Wow. And so I have all of those journals. Oh, how neat. Yeah. That really is neat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do keep a book with me all the time. I don't know if this counts as journaling, but I have a book with me all the time, and I will write things down. That like yes, that is come to me or like quotes or yes, yes. things I want to remember. So I yeah. carry this big book with me every minute. You do with all your jumbo markers in it. Yep. Yep. No, I do. Uh, I I get up and I will do my Bible reading and I will have my journal and I'll write my thoughts down and I will look over 
you know, past things that I have in there. And so it is, it is a great, uh, it is a great way to be grateful and to, yeah. and to see how you've grown or how situations have turned out that you have journaled about in the past. So it's neat. Well, and to go back to and think <clears throat> this was going on, but it didn't last forever. Yes. Like we've overcome this yes. or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can see that would be very yeah. rewarding. So, number nine, hire a counselor. Yeah. We are counselors, but sometimes we feel like we need to have all the answers. We need to have it figured out. We should know. That's not true. Sometimes, uh, and you know I'm a big Fred Rogers yeah. fan, who kept a counselor oh. uh, that he talked to, you know, for years and I know in my own life, I have, he was sitting here with me now. I have a little boy with um, disabilities. And He's our producer. He is the producer of our show. And um, my husband and I, when he was about two years old, we were just worn out and uh, every, you know, caring for a, a child with a disability. If you're listening, you know what that's like. And so we went to a, um, he thought he was doing it for me and ended up, it was more. It was some, for him. Yes, yes. So um, sometimes we need to do that. And I don't discourage people yeah. who come to me, you know, get out there and, and find yourself a therapist and, and, and somebody to talk to and get help if you need it. And if... If, if if you need it, number 10, our last one is? Talk to your doctor about medication. If you need it, then, you know, that's something for you and your doctor to decide. But don't be afraid to take it if you need it. You know the signs as counselors yeah. of depression and when we, how, you know, how we can get in that, how long we can stay in that. And, and uh, you, we want to function. We have families. And again, um... I think we're living in a time, as I said, when James died, it was about medicine when he said that, made that remark, it's the amount of people who are on it, and I think it's who are having to take medication, and a lot of it is we're not living in the same time as our grandparents. That's exactly right, and so. you know, there we don't even have to go into this, but there was, there used to be a stigma on medication, but I just think it's more accepted now because yeah. the day and age is different. And like you said, we get information overload to a degree that our grandparents never could have imagined. Absolutely. Absolutely. And trust the people around you. If they say that, hey, you might need medication, they love you. They want what's best. <laughs> Are they going to say it like that? Hey. Then you really need it. Then you really, <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when you, you know, sometimes you're like, I don't know. what It's you. You're the problem. But, yeah, you, you know if, if that's something that. As a counselor, we know when, when we've had enough and we need help. Yeah. That a break is not going to, all these other things that we're talking about, it's not going to fix it. Right. You know? So, anyway, I really do look like a ran over cat. Speaking of cats, let's. What's your cat of the week? My cat of the week. Can I show it? Are you going to well, show I'll it in a it, little bit? Yeah, I'll put it up but on But it's the... just not funny, and but you have to show it. Yeah. Well, you have to. Describe it, because some people listen to this I know. and don't watch it. So that's why I'm pulling it up. It is my favorite. I laughed so hard. My sister sent this to me, and it said, When you had a rough day but are trying to stay positive, and it is a cat that has the one eye that is, you know, you just see it going, or, you know, I'm describing it, and I'm showing you. It's like one eye's popped open and one's closed, and you're trying to halfway grin, like, I'm gonna, it's okay, it's all okay, it's going to be okay, kids. It's all okay. What's your cat pick? Well, that was my cat. Remember, you had a different one. No, that was my cat. I have no idea where this anger is coming from right now or this had aggression. You a different cat. It was no. The, it was the, never was. That's my cat. My sister sent me that cat. <laughs> I have no idea where this is coming from. I ask you to be prepared with your cat. I was. That was my cat. <clears throat> well, it it's not anymore. Do you want me to do another cat pick? No. No, I have a cat, and it's very fitting right now. Oh. It says when you're furious but trying to stay calm, and the cat is <laughs> gritting its teeth. If you could imagine a cat gritting its teeth, and he has very angry that eyes. That is and that's me, me with my husband all the time. But, yeah, that's <laughs> you right now. We we, mis we misunderstood that whole situation right okay. there. Okay. 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 Um, okay. What is your pick of the week? My pick of the week is... 
a book by Madonna <clears throat> called The English Roses. So I will have to tell this little story. I brought my sixth grade girls in and I gathered them around and I said, I thought it's going to make it cool. Oh, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> This is a book by Madonna. Oh, oh. And I saw when they had that blank look on their faces. Yeah. That they have no idea what I'm talking about. So I said, she was cool like Beyonce. And that's still not getting it. Yeah. I am so behind. I can't keep up. Well, I had the same moment when I did Mr. Peabody's Apples, which is also by Madonna. Which is another. It's a wonderful book. And I don't get it. I I mean, who knew? I know. I shared it, and I was like, guys, you'll never guess who wrote this. Madonna. Crickets. Yes. So? Nobody knew. Sorry, no. Madonna, if you are listening. And she is. Probably with Mary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this book was so good. It's funny, and the... Um, I read it. It takes about 15 minutes to read. And you said it's about, like, girl drama? It is relational aggression. Okay. And it's a one girl's left out. And it's a little spin because she is so beautiful and uh, seems to have everything going in her life. And uh, these girls, it's a, it's a good lesson on empathy because when the fairy godmother uh, gives them an insight into what her life is really like. They had no idea mm -hmm. what she was going through. And so the girls had a really good discussion about um, not really understanding what other people are going through, even if somebody's being mean to them, why, you know, why are they going through, are, are their own behavior to other people they don't know what other people are going through. So it's really... So good. I can't wait um, to... Take that today. The first of five books for children, even grown-up ones, by Madonna. I thought it was pretty cool. That is good. Yeah. My pick of the week is a book also. It's called Conscious Discipline, and it's like a textbook, but I'm reading it. Uh, we had some people come and speak to our school about Conscious Discipline, and it has changed the way that I deal with students, but it's also changed the way that I deal with my own children. It just has opened up my eyes to... Okay, if they are in what's called their animal brain, then they don't need me coming at them equally as, wah, 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 you know? Yes. And so it's helped me <clears> And calm if you down. say animal brain to me one more time, uh, it's she will about. say, I'm not dealing with you right now. You're in your animal brain. So I'm going to have to read the book. Read or I'm not going to so understand you know. why you keep telling me I'm in my animal brain. So I mean, I know. Good. I figured out why. Yeah. I figured it out really quickly. Um, so tell me the name of it again. Conscious Discipline. And it's, is this the first workshop that you went to? Is it all in this book? Is it's that what it's about? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to order it It's today. very good. It, but it talks about education. This is Conscious Discipline as classroom management. But it talks about like the old style of classroom management versus how we need to change things. So yes. It's so good. And, and if recommend. you as counselors are like him, and we talked about this this past weekend when we had some time, uh, teachers come to me about management. Yeah. Have you ever had a class on classroom management? Yes. I have not. But we still have to help. But that was a long time ago. Well, you got and your let me degree. say, I do. And I do not. And let me just say, times they are a-changing. Okay, good point. And I am not who sings that. It's like um, Bob Dylan. Okay. No, it's like a folk <laughs> sexy, times they are a-changing. Kind of a woody, yeah, you know. Okay, Bob Dylan, if you're listening, uh, and Mary I'm and sorry. Madonna, <laughs> we've offended all of our friends. Okay, what's your do you do you have a tip, technique, trick of the week? Um, yes. Okay. Did you already do the Buddha board? No, I didn't. Okay. Share it. Okay. So it's this thing called a Buddha board. If you want to hop on over okay. there, if you'll just take your little Great Dane legs on over there and grab that for me. So I uh, just got this in, and I thought I was ordering the big one. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that little thing. It still works, though. We have so, a spatial we disorder. We do. So now that I'm ordering a lot of things like uh -huh. everybody else in America does, I don't ask. Thus, I got... Instead of the six pack of turkey dogs, I got a oh, yeah. box of turkey dogs. So anyway, so you the put thing, water 
yeah down, down here. here and uh, so the kids can write out their problem or draw out their problem or whatever they want to do and um, this is going to disappear it's just water so it erases it, it evaporates in like no time yeah well it's evaporating now watch my knot yeah. That'd be funny. So anyway, it's going to evaporate, and it gives while you're talking with the the student, you can talk to sometimes that problem that is so big in their life at that day. It gives you a good opportunity to talk about, you know, that's not going. It's it's those things that we find ourselves in are not always yeah that going to be this way. How else have you used your Buddha board? Um, I used it with a small group for mm -hmm. girl drama, mm -hmm. and. We had we talked about the different things that the girls had said to each other, the different words that they mm -hmm, had used, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we wrote them down. It kind of went the opposite way. Yes. Um, and just talked about how the words can erase from paper, the words can erase from here, but we don't forget the words that are spoken. And so we need to be more careful with the words that we say. Yeah. But anyway. that's great. So there is there's a yeah. lot of things that you can do with this. Yeah. Um, with our thoughts, we make the world. It says. Go Ooh. ahead. Uh, my tip, trick, technique is a breathing technique for those students that are that feel out of control, and this is called pizza breathing. And someone tagged us in this on Facebook, um, Instagram, and so thank you for tagging us. But you breathe in like you're smelling a delicious piece of pizza, and then you blow out like you're cooling it off because it's too hot to eat it. Isn't that good? It is. Yeah. So breathe in like you're smelling it. Well, it's a good self care. Yeah. It, oh, also, yeah, I feel better. Did you know? Speaking of self care, um, and I learned this from Conscious Discipline, we humans are the only animals that can take a deep breath, and it's a way to regulate your emotions immediately. Take a deep breath. So add that number eleven. Take a deep breath. I will. And you know. You may have your own, and we would love to know We'd what those are. We'd love to know. Yeah, so check out our blog that goes along with this. I am so tickled. Because it is slowly <laughs> it's erased. Oh, this, it's that hair. Yeah. It's that you hair. Made it very, a very thick. Okay, the face is gone now, yeah. so that's good. I'm like, is it, did I laugh? It is going away then. Good. Okay, well, go join our Facebook group. We have a group that's a community where you belong. It's it's a place just to sort of vent like what we talked about and share how was your day, things like that. So and tips and techniques. Yeah. And so go join things. that and subscribe to our podcast if you would like more to hear more. Subscribe to it. And you can also subscribe to our newsletter. You may be the listener of the week. Teaser. <laughs> People are wrecked pulling They're over. Like, They're in there. <laughs> I gotta subscribe. Oh, 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 oh. My right. son just yelled cut. So Take I care that means it's done. <laughs> Have great National Counselors Week. Bye.